In January of 2019, Ghana, a country with nearly no military pretenses, took the world by storm, but perhaps not for the best reasons. During the 38th Annual Technology Exhibition, organized by the Kantanka Company, the corporation's most advanced technologies were displayed. An armored personnel carrier, safeguarding a group of soldiers armored with exoskeletons, rolled before the eyes of a hypnotized audience, with the event calling for a solemn attitude and igniting national pride among the attendees. But as the soldiers waddled clumsily through the parade, amateurs and experts the world over pointed at an obvious yet sad truth. The event was not a custom show, but a very serious exhibition of military prowess. Self-made. In 2011, Ghana had one of the world's fastest growing economies. But like so many ambitious enterprises, the nation's promising future fizzled out. Only eight years later, during the 38th Annual Technology Exhibition, the city of Accra hosted a display of the country's most advanced technology. The exhibition featured a wide variety of telecommunication technologies and social media apps, but its main event was a parade that showcased the nation's latest military advancements. As shown in footage taken that day, a bulky personnel carrier with a coat of farcical camouflage scheme paint advanced steadily through the cheering crowd, covering the rear of three so-called cyborg super soldiers. But as proud as the Ghanaian attendees were of their nation's latest developments, the rest of the world couldn't help but watch in astonishment. Many analysts agreed that the performance would be almost ridiculous if not for the worrying underlying reality of Ghana and many other developing countries. For one, Brett Tingley of Mysterious Universe noted that, quote, those guys wouldn't even make it into the top 10 at a cosplay convention. Indeed, in the video, it is pretty evident that one of the super soldiers had a loose hose hanging from his leg, or what appeared to be a hydraulic cable, but was, in fact, an empty split-loom tubing. Moreover, the soldiers were wearing motorcycle helmets disguised with spray paint. For all that, the exhibition was actually held as a real military display, and not a costume convention. Furthermore, it was sponsored by a prominent figure in the Ghanaian industry, the Apostle Dr. Kwadwo Safo Kantanka. All in one. According to his own legend, Dr. Kwadwo Safo Kantanka is many things. Not only is he an inventor and Ghana's first car maker, but he is a religious leader too. He started his own church in the 1970s, but the origins of his title remain uncertain. Journalist Raphael Orlov looked into the matter and concluded that, quote, a church with business connections is not altogether uncommon in Africa. It's just that nothing has ever been this technologically advanced or sought this scale of production. Every year since 1980, the inventor and guru has organized tech fairs and unveiled a remarkable collection of products. But as his church and power grew, Kantanka's creations also increased in ambition, including robots that were supposed to act like security guards or farm workers. Besides, he also created a wooden helicopter with rocket launchers held on with tape and a uniquely interesting armored vehicle. The Pentecostal pastor founded Kantanka Automobile Company and got the attention of the international media with the vehicles. Even CNN covered the story of the cars made in Ghana and specially crafted for rough conditions. Kantanka offered what seemed to be mature industrial products made in a not particularly industrial nation. But the world eventually learned the truth. As compelling as the idea is of a domestically run company that offers world-class Ghanaian designed and built cars and trucks, the reality is the company imports everything from a Chinese automaker. The very vehicles claimed to be designed for Ghana's local conditions are indistinguishable from Chinese models that have been available for years. Furthermore, the company's CEO admitted to working with an anonymous Chinese partner. Avoiding the obvious. The dubious showcase of local high-tech advancements in 2019 was perhaps the most ludicrous of Kantanka's claims, as his armored personnel carrier might actually endure small arms fire for a few minutes, but not much else. In the words of military technology experts Tyler Rogaway and Joseph Trevithick for The Drive, quote, it's ungainly, has a civilian-like hobbled-together interior, and is equipped with a few cameras, 
some sort of weapons turret, a laser rangefinder, and there are a bunch of smoke grenade launchers tacked onto it. The platform that the APC shell is built on looks like some sort of hodgepodge of commercial parts. As for the exoskeletons, they had a clunky assault rifle turret attached to the back, cannons on each arm, and what passed for armor panels covering the suit. However, Kantanka is regarded as a hero among his followers. And more impressively, his products are accepted as credible. Much like the case of his supposed local cars, there's more to the character and his creations. Kantanka's cars are manufactured in China and only assembled in Ghana. Even so, the automobile company bluntly declares itself as, quote, Africa's number one choice automaker. Serious military analysts and engineers are perplexed and amused at the bold claims of the Apostle. Ragaway and Trevithick even described Kantanka's so-called tank as, quote, something that defies description and has features that appear ripped from an airplane and a trailer-mounted anti-aircraft gun. Even the vehicles that look more realistic in their basic design have obviously fake weapons and other quote-unquote advanced features. Unsurprisingly, when local journalists have dared raise questions about the pastor's products, they've been met with utter scorn. In fact, the company has a significant base of supporters bolstered by an organic media outlet known as the Kantanka Newsroom. It is said that a local blogger once asked questions about the system's viability, and Nana Safo, one of Kantanka's sons, answered via a scathing hit article titled, Ghanaian Shame Blogger J.B. Klutze Over His Five Stupid Questions About Kantanka's Exoskeleton. Beyond Belief Dr. Kojo Sena, an associate professor at the Department of Sociology for the University of Ghana, explained how the leader hands out free food at the tech fairs, while showing off his inventions to the happy crowds and the politicians in attendance, always trying to obtain votes. But while there are those who regard Kantanka as a hero, Sena remains at best suspicious. He claims the latest technology behind the helicopter and the robots is, quote, beyond my belief. When asking his students and other locals, it was clear they were indeed skeptical, noting a critical factor that other specialists might have overlooked. Everyone was somewhat hopeful the technology might work out. For decades, Dr. Safo has proudly defended his inventions before an amused international audience. He has been ridiculed in the foreign press and simultaneously backed by the local media. Most experts infer that the Ghanaian people hope to see their nation grow to world-class standards, a long shot from their current reality. As silly as they may appear in plain sight, and as funny as the situation might look from the outside, a deeper look reveals just how unequal the modern battlefield has become, leaving millions virtually unprotected from current threats. The sad display that day was no sadder than the actual reality. In Tingley's words, quote, With the world's superpowers boasting technology that makes anyone else's look like bad cosplay, it's no wonder that terrorism and asymmetrical warfare has become the new norm. Just wait until the real cyborg super soldiers start marching through city streets. Thank you for watching Dark Tech. Don't hesitate to subscribe and check out the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels for many more fascinating historical and military stories from around the world. Also, click on the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.